guys, welcome to Lingo Marina. Welcome to another setup. I just like tweaking things in my office to come up with new backgrounds for you every time. Today we're gonna talk about commas. Commas are weird in a way that, well, you kind of need to know how to use them, but I see a lot of people emitting them. I see a lot of people putting too many commas when they write. And a great tool that would help you with commas is called Fluent.Express. It's a website where you just go and upload your text and the native speaker checks it. I try to use Fluent Express whenever I write a post on Instagram or an important email. And normally I wouldn't make too many mistakes, some typos, sometimes I just paraphrase things in a way that they were not supposed to be used, but most of my mistakes are actually commas. So today we're gonna go through different scenarios of using commas in English, and I hope you're gonna remember them and uh, we're gonna use them correctly, starting right after this video. Let's do it, but first, some coffee. Okay, I have my iPad here in a file that you're gonna see on the screen in a few moments. I get a lot of questions all the time, what do I use? This is an iPad Pro with a pencil, and uh, I also use an app called Notability to be able to write on top of different PDF files. And this is something I would highly, highly recommend if you're investing in your educational gear. Like this is something I'm using a lot. I would like download a book or I would download a workbook and I would just make uh, my notes in that book using Notability. But okay, let's jump into commas. We're gonna look at 13 rules of using commas. Before we get into those 13 rules, uh, it is required that you press like below this video because otherwise it won't continue. It will continue, but please press the like button. Okay, rule number one. This one is pretty obvious, pretty straightforward. Whenever you have a list in the text and you have several items, you separate them with commas. So here we go. Item in the list, comma. Item in the list, comma. And then you either use and or you just put a comma. So item in the list, item in the list, but it doesn't matter whether you use and or you do not use and, you still have this comma. Let's look at the example. I like eating oatmeal, comma, berries, comma, and cheese for breakfast. So obvious, very easy. You have a list, uh, you separate your objects in the list with a comma, and you put a comma before and. This is super important because I know in some languages, if you have and, you don't put a comma in a list, but here you do. There are strawberry, chocolate, and vanilla cupcakes in this cafe. Obvious. So the list could either consist of nouns or adjectives or adverbs, depends on your list. And there are two types of adjectives that I want you to understand. It's not about understanding rules, it's actually about feeling the language, but let me, let me explain it. So we have coordinate adjective and we have Cumulative adjective. So let me explain using the examples. She is a fit, healthy woman. Can we say she is a healthy, fit woman? Yes, we can. Can we say she's healthy and fit woman? Yes, we can. Doesn't ring a bell, it sounds okay. If you answer yes to both these questions so you can change their order and you can put an and between them and the sentence still makes sense and it doesn't sound weird, then these are coordinate adjectives and we need to use a comma between them. So this is a really easy one. She's a fit, healthy woman. Because we can say she's a fit and healthy woman. She's healthy, fit woman. So this makes sense. Cumulative adjective. Th they just describe different things. Let's look at this sentence. I like wearing my blue silk dress. Like if you say, I like wearing my blue and silk dress, these sound like two different dresses. Blue and silk are two different categories of what you're describing about your dress. And when you say, I like wearing my silk blue dress, again, normally the color comes first. So here, we can't really change the order. We can't really place and in between those. So there is no need for a comma here, okay? So you really need to make sure you understand the difference. But two main rules that I'm talking about, putting an and, and changing places. Like if the, both of these rules work, then you have coordinate adjectives and you use a comma. Rule number three, a comma between two independent clauses. What I mean by that is we have a sentence that consists of kind of two separate sentences. And if you just split them, they would both make sense. For example, success is their goal, comma, yet happiness comes a close second. So if you just separate them, success is their goal, happiness comes as close second, both make sense. But 
One thing I want you to remember, these independent clauses should be connected with coordinating conjunction. Don't pay attention to all the smart words. They don't really matter. <laughs> I just want you to remember those uh, words that are actually coordinating both of those sentences. And yet, but, for, or, nor, so. In a second example, my husband wanted to buy some chocolate, comma, but the store was closed. I paid your attention to using those coordinating conjunctions, those words, and or, but, yet, for, between the two sentences, because if you don't have any of those, you replace a comma with semicolon with this sign. So if we had, my husband wanted to buy some chocolate, the store was closed, then it's semicolon. But if you have but, it's a comma. Guys, I just wanna make a quick pause here and ask you, do you get what I'm saying? Is it okay for you in terms of like level of difficulty? Please let me know down in comments below if it's too difficult for you or it's okay or it's super easy and you knew everything. It will help me understand your current level and then adjust my videos based on your answers, adjust my future, future videos. Thank you so much. I will be reading your comments. Please, please, please let me know if it's too difficult or too easy or just right. The next rule, a comma after introductory clauses. So when we have this introductory clause, uh, an example will be, while I was eating, my husband came home from work. So this is not really like a separate sentence. You can't say, while I was eating, dot <laughs> my husband came home for work so they interconnected and when we start a sentence with an introductory clause then we need a comma here because her alarm clock was broken comma she was late for class and you might be wondering marina but how do i tell if it's an introductory clause normally uh you would see this part of the sentence start with words like while because after although until unless as as if before etc like you will see those introductory words and they would normally introduce the introductory clause one thing to remember english is always about exceptions when introductory clause ends the sentence when it's in the end then you don't need a comma so let me explain my husband came home from work while i was eating in this case, you don't need a comma because your introductory clause comes after the independent clause. Same with the second example. She was late for class because her alarm clock was broken. If it goes in the end, then we don't need a comma. The only exception from that rule is cases of extreme contrast. And the example will be, she was still quite upset, although she won the gold medal. So here we would put a comma before although just because we want to show this extreme contrast but when it's not about the contrast when it's about timing when it's about what happened uh, then we don't need a comma i i hope i'm not confusing you and i hope you're writing everything down guys because this is crucial another case of using a comma is when you have an introductory phrase let's look at some examples to get a seat you'd better come early after the test but before lunch I went jogging. So this introductory phrase doesn't have its own subject or verb. It just introduces something. It kind of sets the stage for the main part. And here again, hello, English language. Thank you for being so complicated, full of different exceptions. So the rule of thumb here, rule of thumb, that means it's not like grammatically written. It's just how people use it. If your introductory phrase is four plus words, then you separate it with a comma. To get a seat, comma, you'd better come early. If it's just two words, to sit, you'd better come early, which sounds a little weird. But anyways, if it's just two words, no need to put a comma. But if you really want to emphasize something, like to sit, you need to come early because otherwise you will be standing. Like if it's a really emotional phrase, then you can put a comma. But anyways, the, the rule would be here that if the introductory phrase is four plus words, then you use a comma. We also use a comma when we have an introductory word. An introductory word can be, no, no, you can't borrow my cart today. Or why, why, I can't believe this. Or it could also be, yes, of course I'm coming with you. Well, I don't know if that's a good idea. Hey, what's your name? Hello, what's your name? So after these introductory words, we'll put a comma. 
Sometimes it would come as in the middle of the sentence. And what can happen in the middle of the sentence? We can have some non-essential information that just adds value to our sentence, but it can be easily omitted or it can be put in another part of the sentence without really changing the meaning of the sentence. Let's look at these examples of non-essential information. So first of all, clause. Oranges, which are my favorite fruit, we separate these with commas, are the main ingredient in this recipe. So again, we can just omit which are my favorite fruit. And uh, oranges are their main ingredient in this recipe. The sentence alone makes total sense. So we separate this clause with commas. The next example is a phrase that we put in the middle of the sentence. This restaurant has a great atmosphere. The food, on the other hand, is rather bland. On the other hand, is this phrase that should be separated with commas. Again, it can be omitted, doesn't change the meaning of the sentence at all. So we need to separate it. We came to an amazing place today. I was, however, too tired to go hiking. This introductory word can be omitted and uh, we separate it with commas. So concluding here, if this phrase or clause or word interrupts the sentence, you kind of stop. That was, however, too tired to hike the food on the other hand, like you're stopping here. This is number one question that you ask yourself. The second, can I just move it to another part of the sentence and uh, would it still make sense? Can I just leave it out? Would it still make sense? If you answer any of those questions with yes, then you separate your phrase or clause or word with a comma. But please, please, please make sure that you're not separating essential elements of the sentence with a comma. What is an essential element? For example, the book that I borrowed from you yesterday is gone. <laughs> This is an essential part. If you come to your friend and say the book is gone, your friend will be like, which book? What are you talking about? But this phrase that I borrowed from you yesterday makes your friend realize this is his most favorite book and uh, he would be really upset if it's gone. So the book that I borrowed from you yesterday is gone. No need to put any commas in that sentence. Then we have a very easy rule. I know it's overwhelming, but stay, stay there. Keep on watching. It's it's really important, guys. This is the way you write. This is the way you communicate with people. If you have a tech question, British people love tech questions. Um, the food is amazing, isn't it? This studio setup is beautiful, isn't it? So this picture is behind me are beautiful, aren't they? So before tech questions, we have this comma. I know, right? This is like a British version of a tech question. This is like an American version of a tech question. Uh, we just say right, American. I'm Russian, guys. I've, I've been in America for six years only. But anyways, I try to speak American English. I know, right? <laughs> so we separate right with a comma. We're almost done here. I know four rules left and they are kind of easy. The next rule is comma with quotation. So when we quote someone, he said, I'll call you tomorrow. Before this quotation, we put a comma. I'll call you tomorrow, he said, but please make sure that you put a comma before actually ending the quotation. So it comes right here. I'll call you tomorrow, he said. That's an easy one, I think, because if you read in English, you've probably seen a lot of those and um, a lot of different examples of how people actually put commas here. We also put commas in dates, but sometimes. <laughs> Hello, English again. Day of week, month, date, year. Like if we have several attributes to our date, then we'll put a comma. Thursday, September 12, 2013, and we put a comma here as well, was the day I met my future husband. However, if you only have September 2013 and you don't have the exact date, then September 2013 was a great month. That's it, no commas needed. Also, if you're using day, month, year format, applications are due by 31st of December 2016, then again, you don't need any commas here. So only if you use like this long uh, kind of format. The next one is pretty easy. If we address someone in our sentence by name, then we separate this name with commas. Will you, Alice, come to my birthday party? Now, whenever you have an address, again, commas. John Smith, 123 Palm Street, Miami, Florida, 32004. After moving to Los Altos Hills, California, we fell in love with this country. So whenever you are having several attributes to your address, you separate them with commas. Just pay attention again that whenever you finish the address, whenever you finish the date, you have to finish the whole thing with a comma. I know sometimes it doesn't make sense, but 
especially if you're non-English native speaker and you have a different rule in your own language. And the last but not the least, guys, we did it, you did it. Um, a positive. A positive is something you also separate with commas. A positive, think of it as additional non-essential information. Additional info. Alexander Pushkin, the Russian poet, is one of the world's most famous poets. So it's just like this addition to the sentence. Thank you guys so much for watching this video up to the very end. I hope you wrote things down. I hope it was useful because this is something you learn once and then you use for the rest of your life and you don't have this question of Marina, where do I put the comma? Again, the, the app that you can use to check yourself is called Fluent.Express. You upload your text there and uh, uh, native speakers check your text and put the commas if you miss them. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for watching this video up to the very end. If you're not yet subscribed to this channel, and you're learning English, I don't know, like this is a huge mistake. This is your number one mistake in your English language. Thank you so much. See you soon. Bye-bye.